um, some European players, I guess. French and Italian. And I kind of want to say yes, but uh, we'll see. Here, Marine. There's a reason people expect him to win a lot of things. It's pretty good. In the bottom left is the blue Terran. He is Liquid Clem. One of the best pickups for a team since Ting picked up Neve, I think. In top right, as the Red Terran, it is Hero Marine from Maus, which is he's been on since he started pro gaming. I I would love to know what the heck deal is actually going on there. <laughs> Cause Hero Marine wasn't actually playing for a little while. In the grand scheme of things, it's a little while, but in uh I I mean a couple of years. He wasn't really playing. He still had enlisted. I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah, Liquid, picking up Clem. It's one of those, like, yeah, it's a good idea. And then it worked out really well with his real rise to all the performances he has online right now. Like, that's a really hot pick up there. I guess there was also Sue being picked up by Chivo before his Katavite win. That was pretty <laughs> was pretty well-timed as well. But Chivo isn't here anymore. Womp, womp, womp. What's the picture on the cup? Uh, the Rainer's Raiders. No, Joy Ray's bar. The Hydra Skull. It's the Joy Ray glass set that Blizzard gave us a billion years ago. And I said, don't ever I get my own place, I'm going to use all my own cups. And I finally did. Can you explain how the qualifiers work? I'm not sure what the cutoff is for the qualifiers, but... Anyone uh, European or North American can play in this one. I want to say Masters, maybe Diamond and above. Yeah, you can always find out more by going to Team Liquid. <laughs> Holy observers, yeah, that's what happens. All right, so interesting things happening. Clem goes for a two barracks, but not proxied. There's two barracks, and here Marine goes for a one X expand. Now here Marine's doing something that you can technically hold anything with. Even though, yeah, two racks, I guess, is technically holdable if you scout it. But here, Marine also notably not scouting. He scouted for a literal two racks, the proxy version we are very familiar with when we say two racks. Doesn't find one, finds Reapers instead, though. So he knows something is afoot, but he didn't see the two barracks as fast as he could have. Ideally for Clem, he stops his bunker from getting up and running, but the second Reaper might just be a little bit too late to the party. Uh, here, Marine, I think very importantly, not just going immediately into a reactor after the Reaper, nor after his second Marine. He is still building Marines, and that is pretty important. Without that, he probably doesn't get that one Reaper of Clem's. Maybe loses the bunker as well as a whole snowball effect. And Clem's opener. Not going to give him too much in the early game here. Here, Marine doing a very good job dealing with this, and again, I think a lot of it has to go back to him not producing an add-on immediately to the barracks, but good reaction as well upon seeing the Reaper over here. Playing defensive and keeping true to it, playing even more defensive. Uh, but Clem does have a follow-up to this that you can do that the player going for the 1-1-1 one, one, one can't do, which is a 2... You basically go into a 2-1-1. One, one. Uh, not very popular for pros to go into a literal 2-1-1, one, one, that is to say Stim, Marine, 16 Marines, and, and a Medivac, but a version of it can certainly happen. Nah, he's not going to go into it. Okay, so he just swaps off, actually. And that's more so what I expected from the Professional Terran. You will still have the means of, of more barracks production if you wanted to go along with that, but it's not something he's planning on doing, really. Not even using this one barracks. So, going to play, be playing the Tech Wars. Tech's so important in TVT. Well, Tech Labs all the time, but here in Marines doing a very standard thing. He did bother to grab two Hellions. Fearful of the massing of Reapers that can happen. You think, oh, I dealt with the first two Reapers, fine. Oh my god, there's suddenly six Reapers. Shit. And uh, they're going to be more and more useless over time, but so be it. Here, Marine got that faster gas. Slower on the third CC. Slight differences. Could have been much worse. Clam is behind. He chose a build that was supposed to do more damage than it did. But with TVT, comebacks are extremely possible. And these tiny little differences that are probably catastrophic in a PvP, how brutal that matchup is, uh, not really so much in TVT. Come 
Oh, that Reaper died super quick. <laughs> uh, the Reaper kind of scouted the third CC, though, right? Got up there? Yeah. That's still a nice scout. I wouldn't... Well, I mean, if, if one player was going to do more of a two barracks... Oh, sorry. Two base push, I guess Clem would be the one I would suspect. Suspect. Here, Marine, not so much. Here, Marine, always third CC, always macro all the time. Good stuff, you know. But I was gonna say that I just don't think it's really meta right now in TVT. I, I actually... Not that I've cast that many TVTs, but I'm trying to think of when I saw the two base push last happen. I don't... Eh. No, so, so many varieties of openers. Factory expands, one rocks expands, tank pushes, Viking Raven, just Raven, no Raven, you know, whatever. But every one I can think of actually still goes into a third CC. So the point is not necessarily going to be a surprise of a scout, but a nice scout nonetheless. Both of them going into double upgrades. Slight differences. I mean, I say slight, but Hammering's actually kept like a six to seven worker lead, which is considerable. I don't want to underplay that, but it's just the manner of TVT. One decent engagement, one decent drop from Clem will bring that around. Or alternatively, Hero Marine just won't be able to break Clem because tanks are pretty good. High level? Me? Oh, thanks. <laughs> they both went for a single Raven, right? Yeah. Not that double raven's not uncommon. It's not totally phased out, but it is it does kind of feel like that's so 90s, you know? Before the Raven change, Triple Reaper, sorry, Triple Raven was even popular, but it's a bit different now. Clem is going to go for the push first. Not that he's really He's actually not so much in the right to do this in terms of like, I have an advantage somewhere. He doesn't. <laughs> but to be the active one on the map in TVT is actually almost always a better thing to do. And uh, Clem is certainly an active Terran player. Uh, okay, he almost misplayed that one. He will still misplay it? Yes, he will. Hammering's gonna take the, the fight, man. All the upgrades are finishing for both parties, but more importantly, Hammering started off that fight with more supply. That's what I was about to get into. Hammering had more army supply, he had more workers. That's why I was saying that Clem isn't really like. Obviously, he's in the right to do whatever he wants, but it's just it wasn't going to amount to very much. And in that specific scenario, it really didn't amount to much. But not one of the end game scenarios where it's like, wow, I just lost my entire army. Nope, he saved a decent portion of it. He had his macro back at home going fine. And they still have an even enough army supply to say all's fair. The tanks will guard the third base and fourth base back at home for here, Marine. He did immediately pick up double drops. Raven goes for a bit of harassment, but is pretty much denied there. Not too bad. Clem just continuing to try and be the aggressor is all around the map. But it's here, Marine, with a bit of a sneaky drop. Not so sneaky anymore. Single Marine's going to scout that, but did he actually see it? It looks like he did. Picks up those medevacs to secure his main base. Tanks on the low ground. Very, very proper response to this, because here, Marine did absolutely have both options available to him. Uh, wow, super good. Super good response. And the game goes on. Both of them get fourth CCs. Yeah, we a bit faster that uh, second factory, which Clem will also be wanting. Denies the double drop just by scouting it. Wow. No, I said like I was didn't mean to undersell the income advantage. <laughs> well, it's got its peak is like 600 difference, but still, that's a long time to have a difference of income. Barely saved those two medevacs. Don't even know how that happened. Raven's still alive for more harassment as well later on. Ravens get harder to use. I wouldn't say they get less important when TBT continues into mid-game. It just gets harder to use. There's so many things happening. So many um, split-second decisions that Ravens don't really factor into. But the Raven can still do a pretty nasty anti-armor missile the longer the game goes. Interference Matrix becomes less potent as well just because the tank count grows really high. But never underestimate a Raven. Clem gets three SCVs with that. Goes back into the corner. Here, Marine this time is like, you know what? I am going to kill that. And uh, unfortunately, that's going to leave here, Marine. Going to leave Clem without a Raven. And here, Marine with a Raven. But I almost ate my words there. <laughs> I'll just say, please? Huh? Hey? Maybe repair? Ah! Oh! Repair? Maybe? Uh, maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Did the Raven actually survive? No. What? No. 
No, I don't even care what's happening in the rest of this game. <gasps> what? How did this happen? Oh my god. Clem, what is with Ravens today, man? Clem attacks into the natural of Liberate, attacks into the fourth base on the high ground, but not with tanks, and unfortunately it was right into the Marines. If those were tanks on that high ground, it would have been a lot more difficult to deal with. But while his Liberators look to be taking charge of this natural ramp, that was a lie. The Vikings actually came back. They didn't get the Raven, after all. Came back, dealt with the Liberators, and Clem's almost deadly two-pronged attack ends up not being a big deal. He gets the Raven immediately. He gets the Vikings as well, because the Khan gets off of the tanks. Here, Marine late to the tank siege up. Also, his tanks on the high ground still not sieged up themselves but has enough Marines on the ground to actually push this back. It was a little scary for a second there, but here Marine just had a lot of units. He did have an army supply lead once again for that fight. 3-3 three, three started at the same time for both players. Uh, yeah, eventually Clown did go into a second factory, but he also is going into double starport. You want to go into the next phase of TVT, or you're going to be caught up against someone who has superior technology and your choices are limited just trying to out-micro them, out-maneuver them. Talking about that Liberator Viking phase of TVT, which both of them should be considering right now. Apparently, they're not going to break each other before four bases, before five bases. So, yeah, I start thinking about those starports. And Clem is thinking just a little bit faster. It can be a bit deadly to go into starport production. Uh, the, the seesaw and the way that StarCraft works, like if you go into quadruple Liberators, then you don't have two or three more tanks, 20 more Marines, suddenly you get overrun. Um, you do get the Liberators out, but then they're not in the right position. You get, as I was saying, the mobility of the opponent gets better, but it is technically supposed to be the better army. When you have that air control, when you have Liberators and tanks, the opponent's not going to have any options against you. But we're not quite there yet. Clem is also getting a fusion core, so he's definitely thinking about it, but still trying to find the advantage in positioning. Liberator's going to be a real bother. He's actually going to take out this positioning, and Clem is going to lose the command center back on his side of the map. He was trying to tag this army, but it was just a little bit too large to tackle with the Marines of his own. He had to have the tanks, and well, they're not very mobile, are they? Liberator was cleaned up at a hefty loss of Marines, I would guess. That's probably what happened. And uh, the tanks will hold on. They're no longer denying the fourth base mining. Here, Marine, I thought he had a fifth CC. Oh, there it is. Doi on the way, and he just denied Clem's 5th CC, so he'll be feeling a little bit better, but here is an engagement. It's going to go better for Clem with the tanks to jump. A little late to the pickup there in the medevac to end up losing every last Marine. Still stuck up against these two It's only two tanks. Like, it really should be something that here Marine does clean up, but it just is going to require a lot of focus, and things are getting really wild in this TBT. Perhaps after, like, five series of one-sided games, we're finally going to get a really close TBT because it's an amazing matchup to watch, not to play. God forbid I'm playing this one. But to watch is amazing. You know what? He hasn't actually given that up. I thought that was going to be a cleanup. It's not. And then here, Marine. Oh, devastating right now. He actually didn't realize his tanks had been AI'd away from his Marines. That was terrible. The Marines over here don't have medevac, so they can't take on the tanks despite having a concave. Here, Marine, his tank count plummets, but his overall supply is still holding strong. He's finally evening up the upgrades on the tanks, by the way. He actually skipped tank upgrades for a very, very long time, whereas Clem afforded them and also afforded the faster transition into Liberator Viking. And I actually really, I, I can barely explain how that happened because here, Marine did have the income advantage for a lot of this game. Quick check on it again. I guess Clem bounce back with force <laughs> a lot more peaks from his consistent mining i suppose but he has played the better overall game it feels but it's certainly not over yet here marine has a fifth base on the way he is getting viking production but he really needs to add on more star ports in case clam actually gets this type of position like literally this type of position but then suddenly you add on vikings and liberators is is so strong it's it's almost unbreakable i would say almost but Clan doesn't have Liberators yet. He's still looking to win the Viking War, so Vikings come first. Speaking of Vikings, going to clear up that Medivac. Liberator of Here Marine going to help. Not really, but more importantly, a big old surround from Here Marine trying to come in here. It's a bit more awkward than I thought it would be, but it does work out. Here Marine down 20 supply knows that there's got to be an attack coming somewhere. They both have sensor towers everywhere. That doesn't mean that Clem isn't prepping an attack. Yeah, exactly, right on the edge of it, which is exactly what was happening. Clem has a. Uh, not built medevacs in quite some time so that could be a problem with the marine fights but that the idea is that tank liberator viking is kind of the perfect engagement anyways maybe you don't really need to worry about your marines other than just them being fodder i think here marine might have been too surprised by the transfer over into the starport units but i think more accurately here marine just couldn't get the his feet under him to actually go into it as well. 
I think he at one point might have been able to, but then a couple too many mistakes, like those tanks dying um, with their AI going every which way, means that he didn't really have a lot of resources to, to both defend against Clem's relentless attacking as well as get his own Liberators and Vikings. So, and as I was saying, with that style, if you don't do it well and you try and transfer over, Sometimes you just die. You know, you start to be the more turtly Terran and you get outmaneuvered. And we see that happen a decent amount. But Clem, he was the aggressor up until the switch, which is just a real brutal thing. Probably the perfect way to, to play that. If it works. And in that case, it did. But only, I feel like only because Hearmarine did slip up uh, here, there, over there, over where. Because I think there's a another game where Hero Marine does defend more of those early attacks. You know, the pre-Liberator attacks a bit more better. More better, you heard me. And has the defense against the Liberators as well. And Clem's, you know, surprise doesn't work out. But yeah, Hero Marine just played a little bit sloppy. Just a little. And sometimes that's okay. You know, TVT can get really sloppy for both sides. But if you're not doing anything to your opponent, forcing them to be sloppy as well, then you're just being sloppy. Yeah, of course you're kind of supposed to lose. Well, that was an exciting TVT. Thank you. Thanks, players. In the top left, up one, it is the Blue Terran Clem. In the bottom right, as the red Terran, it is Hero Marine. TVT is a chess match, and I fucking hate chess. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so many people try and compliment TVT. It's like chess. It's so difficult, but it's beautiful. <laughs> You're just like, nah, they both suck. Uh, I love watching TVT. I, it's such a bother to play, though. Because all these things that professionals seem to just make not that important. Like, I guess it... Hmm, how to say? The, the lower you are in leagues, the more TVT is either, like, a, abruptly ended because of stupid things. Yeah. Just because you're not, you're not good. Like, the, you, don't, you don't flatten the, the curve. Like, you, you just die. Like, you're like, Doom Drops, they're, they're so stupid, right? But then you can doom drop your opponent and have them be like, doom drops are so stupid, right? Or Reapers in the opener, right? Like you die to three Reapers and you're like, well, TVT is super cool. But then you compare yourself to a pro. And a pro almost never really loses to those things. A doom drop can be effective as a strategy. And occasionally, yes, it does end the game. But not, not really, not, not usually. Same with the openers. I mean, Clam was supposed to have a, an opportunity to kill a bunch of workers. Start a bit of a snowball effect, delay the command center, whatever. With that last game, he didn't do it. But that didn't end his life, and didn't end here Marine's life. Like, but we play either one of those positions, and we, we screw that up. And we lose, actually. So it's just, it's so difficult to play when you're not extremely good. <laughs> and it feels like more of a BS match. But when you watch these guys play, and they actually barely manage to control a situation, but they still manage to control it, it's... Oh, beautiful. Speaking of those Reapers in the early game, right? I was setting up without you guys even realizing it. I saw those units come across the map for Clem. Um, really, it's not a big deal. They both went for similar openers here. Similar enough, I should say. And Clem gets not so much a denial, a delay on the command center building, but a bit of a delay in that mule being called down. A couple of units treated out. This, that, or the other. What have you. Thank 
you, Sarah Tano. And thank you, Spread Weasel, for the 200 bits. Much appreciated. Extremely more goodest, exactly. Ooh, Clem. Clem does have a couple of sneaky early game builds. More so than I think Hero Marine does. Hero Marine's gonna go for the little standard again. Whereas Clem is gonna really change things up by going for a one base tank drop. Now, if this is done to me, you guys will hear me be extremely judgmental of the person who did it. Not because I lose and I'm salty. I just actually think it's not that good. But if Clem does it, I'm just gonna assume that it's pretty good. You know? Uh, so we'll see what happens. The reason that I don't think they're particularly good is that tanks... Tanks are kind of weird in that they can either be... One tank can be the biggest problem in the world, or it can be the easiest thing to take care of. And in TVT, one tank is usually the easiest thing to take care of. Because a concave does really well against it. An SCV pool does well against it. An interference matrix does well against it. You know, who to thunk it? But the Raven doesn't have an interference matrix at this time. And the SCV pool is negated just a little bit more than usual by also having the Hellions here. Well, the Interference Matrix isn't used. The Auto Turret still is pretty damn good because it also soaks up all that aggression, all the taunts that the Marines, the SEDs would have goes to that Auto Turret. And this is not a terrible hold. It's a bit wonky. It's not perfect, but it was a hold. Uh, ideally, I think the Medivac does go down to that Cyclone Lock-On is the thing I think would change to make it better. I think you'd have to get a couple of SED kills to actually hold. But it's fine because you actually have an SED lead. So that was a that was a good representation of why I don't think they're that great. But I mean if it's harassment, it's harassment. It's doing fine enough. And again, that medevac living means that there could be more harassment. That's what I think Yerman really wants to grab. And he grabs it. Also saves his ravens. I'm sure Clem was trying to get a lock on on that one, but it was unsuccessful. Oh, Clem's Raven comes in. Didn't even see that across the map. But it doesn't do too much. Good hold here from Hero Marine. Clem down a couple of workers, but literally just a couple. Faster third CC? I like 10 seconds. Going into those barracks a bit faster than here, Marine, which is notable. Production timings at TVT. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> you guys probably heard that. Too much positioning in important CVT? Is the game too tense without getting much action? I mean, I heavily disagree. I think that the tense buildup to the action is what makes it the, in, an amazing. Plus, it's almost never just like, lol, we both stare at each other's tanks. It's always something else happening. I think maybe wall TVT, that's exactly what it was. <laughs> just like, oh, we have tanks. Let's, let's look at each other. <laughs> oh, I have more Vikings, yay. But, no, not nowadays. Okay, that was a brutal analogy, but you're not wrong. I'm just not going to repeat that one on air. Here, Marine going for the push, grabs the Cyclone, good interference matrix. Scans ahead, sees that Clem is trying to get ahead of the engagement, which might seem like a scary thing to do. It is a scary thing to do. It might seem like the wrong thing to do because, well, Clem's down in supply. He doesn't have as many Ravens, whatever he does. But as an example, well, if you get ahead of it, one, you can surprise your opponent. Maybe they don't scan and they run into your tanks. It's always nice. And then two, you can kind of control the engagement a little bit better. Buy a little more time. Because they have to also size up your army as opposed to just blitzing into your natural. And this spot time for literally two more Vikings. Which is giving them more of an even footing on the Ra Raven Viking War. Which was <laughs> really what the engagement was all about. That was so... <laughs> there were actually more Vikings than I thought for here in Marine. They were all stacked up. <laughs> that was my bad, but... Just the way, like, I, ravens are so silly in TVT. Like, they just ravened each other to death. They're like, turt, 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 turt. All right, anyways, the, the game continues on. Four tanks to three. Here, Marines, Vikings are great, but three CC to three CC. They're both going to have scans. You're not going to get too much more done, and Clem's going to have faster Marine reinforcements. So, yeah, maybe just pack it up and go home. Uh, combat shield's going to be faster, because Sim is faster for Clem. That could be... That actually could be a big contributor. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Viking's still going in favor up here, Marine. Uh, trying to siege up maybe in the natural to delay some mining. Not going to get really much done. Doesn't even win that tank war. Uh, but yeah, that combat... Because usually when you see really very close builds here, 
uh, minor differences meant that here Maureen had those Vikings and later Stim. But usually if it is later Stim, it's like maybe 30 seconds, but this is like almost a minute. And it's also a minute where you're now producing off of a decent amount of production, JCC. So that's why I'm saying it could play a part in this game, but maybe not. Clint is pushing. And that's the, the first part of taking advantage of an upgrade is pushing when you actually have it. Hmm, we'll see. Hero Marine, very defensive against drops. It's not going to be sidetracked. It's going to focus everything on the main engagements, but that's a lot of Vikings, not just not part of the army for the main fights. That's also a lot of Vikings just not contributing to the ground fight, which it sometimes goes it is the most important part of the fight, right? So that army supply from Hero Marine is, is kind of a lie. His marine production was not that quick with the way he built up his starport units instead. I'm guessing. I didn't actually watch the exact timing of all their barracks, but we know that Clems was faster. Combat Shields looks like it will finish. Uh, just just barely, you know, enough tank coverage everywhere that Clem can't find an opening. And with Vikings, of course, it's not really possible. Well, that drop got denied. This drop not as denied. Uh-oh. Hold on here. I was going to say, not able to push in with a Combat Shields upgrade. Still not really doing so, but oh, he's going to grab plus two. Oh, no. Okay, well, he grabs plus two armor, but it's restarted on the other engineering bay, but he never got plus two attack. Wait, what? Usually plus two attack is the priority. That's weird. That's really weird. That could be a problem. Now, Clem, it's important that he did delay those upgrades because his upgrades were also a bit delayed. Okay, he does send him immediately. So he'll still have an advantage here, but a second engineering bay is going to have to come down, and he will be behind in that plus two weapons. Here, Marine, that is. Clem. Bit down in armor supply, bit down in workers, but ahead in those upgrades eventually. It's a long time coming. He's going to try and once again just uh, be the aggressor in TVT. Force Hero Marine to always respond to what he's doing, where he's pushing. It might seem like a very obvious thing to do. Whoever's in control of the game is going to do better, but keep in mind that when you're in control of the game, usually you're, you're paying attention to more things, you're more vulnerable situations than the person who's calmly just focusing on one thing at a time. And usually that's when like a double drop kills your third CC. Or you aren't sieged because you're macroing back at home because all the rest of us are bad. But Clem is not bad. Clem will do both. And here Marine has to do both and then also find some way to actually wiggle in his own aggression. Because if he, again, just does what he did last game, which is mostly defend, he's going to be caught up in that transition that, that Clem was able to get to and he was unable to. But that was also on the side of him losing a couple of tanks more than he should have. A couple of uh, flubs in that last game. So if he doesn't do it this one, maybe it's all fair. Already losing that tank war that was protecting his planetary, so it doesn't look like it's a good sign for this game going in here in Marine's favor, guys. Like... It's not so much the armor supply, it's the positioning of those tanks. And God, Clem has a lot of tanks. Good lord. Here, Marine knows that that was a pretty bad uh, loss there, so he's going to do a quintuple, sextuple drop. Nailed it. But no tanks means that the planetary is going to be really difficult to take on. Two tanks actually back at home for Clem. How does he have two tanks back at home plus a billion tanks on the offensive? What? Decent split from here. Marine is going to end up taking out the tanks, but this isn't really a whole lot to go into the main base to stall out production. At best, it pulls Clem back home, but here Marine's still lost. An entire fourth command center is long distance mining with the superior SCV count, so it's not really that superior. And the drop is entirely cleaned up. Medivacs and all. Here Marine was thinking about trying to coordinate another attack with that push, but doesn't really work out very well. Clem actually scans, thinking, realizing that was probably the plan, and sees nothing and says, oh, Yay! Yay for me! Viking Liberator is probably Hero Marine's best bet, actually. If he's gonna play, if he's gonna be forced into this offensive style, then he's either gonna get ahead of the, the the kill move that was last game, or he's just legitimately going to have something that Clem can't break. Yeah, either one. Point is, he's not gonna die. And that's <laughs> number one priority right now is not dying. If he had traded out more army than he did just now, then he also is down economy, down in army supply. It's bad news, but that army trade is actually not too bad. All things considered, if he can save all of his economy, taking a good fight over to the top right, but all these tanks at the bottom left, he just has so many tanks! There's just so many! 
Every time here, Marine thinks he's about to get ahead of the engagements, suddenly there's not just four tanks, three tanks sieging up, there's seven tanks sieging up, which is a very big difference. It's the difference of a concave of Marines killing the splash damage versus killing half of it and then still getting demolished. Here, Marine is losing control over this game again. He is taking out the tanks of the Liberators. I mean, these Liberators are actually being sieged up very well. Usually when you're trying to respond to different engagements with Marines in one place and Viking Liberator in another, inevitably your Viking Liberator goes over a bunch of Marines and you die. But here Marine actually, he's using them for the best I've, I've, I would ever see, I feel. And he's protecting his fourth base. Now he lost mining on the third CC. He did lose a handful of workers, but still 67 is not bad. And he still has that Viking control, but... Those Liberators and Vikings lasted so much longer than I thought they would. I thought they would go over Marines, but I guess, <laughs> funnily enough, Clem, I had commented many times on how many damn tanks he had. Didn't have a lot of Marines to even work with. And in fact, his answer to the Liberators is not trying to go into his own starport, because he definitely couldn't afford it. With all that aggression, only one on four bases, he actually could not afford to slap down a bunch of starports. He went for Thors instead, but the Thors not helping out here. They actually didn't even take out that second Liberator. They get taken out by the Marines. The tanks continue to see chop forward. The upgrade's going to be temporarily in favor of here, Marine, for just a hot second here with the tanks. But more importantly, the momentum is back on here, Marine's side. Clem getting a little too over-aggressive, I think. He's, his tanks to the right side died, his tanks to the bottom side died to the Liberators, and while he still had a decent number of tanks, he kept rallying into the push, hoping that he would win, and suddenly here, Marine went from having to deal with triple-pronged attacks, a, a lost planetary, into actually winning the damn game. TVT. TVT is such a good matchup. Two Liberators were super worth it that last game. Because they're like the, they're the OG Liberators. Just watching that last fight happen again. Beautiful. Ooh, bright. Ooh, very bright. Golden Wall, the last match. <laughs> okay. To the bottom left is the blue Terran. It is Clem. Bottom right is the red Terran. It's here, Marine. All tied up. That's how we like it. Hmm. Golden Wall, though. Don't don't like that so much. This might be one of the first TVTs I've seen on this map. So many TVZs have happened on this map, but not so many TVTs. So, uh, I mean, the trend of the two games were similar, even though the person who won was not. It is, as we would kind of expect, Clem being more aggressive and here Marine being more defensive. Not in any extreme way, where it's super cheese versus five CCs, but it is the styles they're, they're, they're playing. Clem had two early game attacks, double barracks in the first game, tank push, drop, whatever, in the second game. And the Marine just defended all of that with similar builds. 1-1-1, one, 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 Factory, Raven, and the tanks eventually type thing. Thank you, Spread Weasel, for another 200 bits. Huzzah. Hmm. 
I would expect the same thing to happen here where Clem, even if he doesn't go for an early attack, which apparently he is not. CC first. Sorry, after barracks. You know, it's kind of like CC first are almost non existent in StarCraft 2. Almost. But they used to be a thing for sure. Maybe like a third of TVZs would, would happen that way, but. I feel like we could almost get away saying a CC first and people would know we meant after barracks. Because an actual CC first is just, yeah, doesn't happen. Anyways, anyways, they both go for the same openers here, but I still think that Clem is going to be the aggressor. I mean, here, Marine, he does his attacks like any good Terran should. I'm not going to paint him as a super passive guy because he's not. He's not, and also TVT can't be super passive. You guys might be saying, well, Mech is super passive, and well, yes. But again, going back to that way that pro gamers and TVT especially feel so different than the, the plebs <laughs> playing TVT. Is that while uh, early reapers are annoying, doom drops are annoying, fast battle cruisers are annoying, mech is annoying to everyone. To come in here, Marine, if they saw mech, they'd probably actually feel a little bit confident. I don't want to say it's not possible in TVT, of course it is, but it's just, I think they would actually feel a little more confident. The trend certainly has been less mech in TVZ, in TVT. Sure, in TVP, I guess. But yeah, less mech in the last five, six months. Are they both going to do the same drop? Now, that would be shocking, but... Oh, oh okay. No, they aren't. So maybe here we're expecting some early Reaper stuff. Because he's still going for four Hellions. But without a drop, you would think they don't do much damage. Unlike uh, Protoss, who don't have a lot of units in the early game, Terrans have equal a decent uh, either a decent amount or literally the same units you know <laughs> to protect their natural so four hellions six hellions six hellions really hmm well that's enough to blitz through this natural because there's nothing protecting it medivac had picked up all the hellions going into hero marine's base something he has no idea about both of them not getting a scout what the factory was doing hero marine can almost you know, depend on, sorry, Clem can depend on Hero Marine to do something similar to the last two games because he's a little bit more predictable, but it's actually not. The Raven sees this and, well, what options do you really have? Both of them going to go for Hellions in each other's bases. Auto turret helps out a bit, takes out one Hellion. That's still one shot to the workers, though, at three. Uh, lifted supply depots, the strongest structure in the game, <laughs> defends Clem's SEVs. But with the medevac, Clem just hops over the supply depots up here marine and so far it's a bit better for clem but this was stupidly close like what like <laughs> uh clem actually goes for a banshee after this but i don't think it's gonna be very effective <laughs> we'll see <laughs> and, and a medivac still doing stuff because he's gonna kill it no cyclone was made Oh, my bad. It was made. It just popped. Um, and that's really, really good news for Hero Marine, because he takes out the Medivac. He also will now have the perfect defense against the Banshee, Cloak or not. So 13 SCVs were lost by Hero Marine. Like, 9 or 8, right, from, from Clem. Which does put Clem slightly in the lead. Hero Marine's supply was more in those Hellions that he ended up saving. But it's... What could have been a catastrophe for one person and not at all for another? Like, was <laughs> surprisingly even. I actually, I actually really thought Clem had it just by having the ability to raise his depots, but no, eh, no, I don't know. Game continues. Is that a third Raven? That is a third Raven. Could go for a bust on the natural Clem. Having sacrificed more time on his starport, is not going to have a lot of. He's not going to have either any Vikings. He does have none. I'm correct. He either has no Vikings or they're later. Just kind of done. He either has no Ravens or they're later. Or he has, you know, Vikings. But the thing about Vikings, instant now there, is that they don't necessarily stop the interference matrix coming down or the auditor it's coming down. So. Three Ravens against zero. It can be a bit testy. Seems like there's not going to be any push, though, from here, Marine. He doesn't really have his own powerful units aside from Triple Raven. 
Did he cancel it? Am I... Oh, I feel like I'm going crazy. I think he just canceled it. Okay, never mind then. Never mind. Third CC is on the way. Stim on the way for both players. Clem's quite a bit faster to it, though. And Clem's going to be the one pushing out, actually. He may not have any Ravens, but he has the Viking count. Thank you for a piece Both their armies looking very similar. The Ravens, though... I would say if your army count is similar, I would put Ravens ahead of the Vikings. Well, actually, Humorine has the same amount of Vikings, so for sure, <laughs> I would put I would put Ravens ahead of two extra tanks. Clem is gonna decide not to go for it, just stall out here in the middle. Thank you, Hail Four, for the six one three sub. And it's not much gonna be happening here. The Hellions and the, <laughs> the Hellions are still alive. And the Cyclone as well. One's gonna go scouting for a hidden base, perhaps? Oh, just scouting for the third, actually. Where the third is headed, so that's correct scout. And these Hellions are going to dawdle in the middle of the map and do nothing. Oh, wow, they didn't... Oh, if only they knew. That natural was wide open. Missed opportunity. Oh, well. SCV over here is, I guess, just scouting for drops or... Yeah, him moving across the golden wall. So that was a really nice SCV scout. Sim's done for both parties, but combat shields is late for here, Marine. He needs to get all of his units in position to hold this as well. Taking the high ground is really brutal. Golden wall, it looks like it won't help out that much, but it actually really does. Unless they literally just stick to this side, but they almost always concave over and get hit by the tank. Hellion's just doing a good job scouting and sacrifice the Cyclone, unfortunately. The Hellions could try and go to the third base, which Clem is already on top of. He could lose maybe four SCVs here. How did that one Hellion not die? Oh, more than four SCVs are going to go down. Oh, the rally in. Oh, and Clem actually didn't respond. He responded with a single Cyclone. doesn't kill the Hellions fast enough. <gasps> Hellions getting 11, 12 SCVs. The yeah, Marine has his own third on location in the back, but yeah. The big difference of Golden Wall, but it's also protecting his natural. Combat shields might have been a bit later once again, but it also is not going to matter, just like last game. Banshee, just <laughs> both Banshees were not helpful whatsoever. Oh no! He got the engineering base, and then, oh man. He had to wait so long to start those. They were already later than here, Marines, but oh, that's, that's a big difference. That's 0-0 zero, zero against 1-1 one, one in 15 seconds. Nope, anti-armor missile. It's a choice. Still has both Ravens alive. Goes for even more interference matrix. He's barely gonna win the Viking War. Plus he's gonna have re faster reinforcements. Second factory is about to be finished up here for Hammer. He will hold onto his third base, fine. And double drop headed towards the natural, though. It's gonna really be weird seeing how they play around each other's respective thirds. But since Clem has and still continues to be the real aggressor, I guess it's more about how Hero Marine protects his unnatural third. <laughs> uh, double drop to the south. I guess Clem just... Oh, oh, he swapped. He, sw he bamboozled me. I thought those were going to go to the north. And Well, okay, he did the opposite. These to the south, army to the north, tanks are sieged, sensor towers coming up as well. If this base is not too well protected, but speaking of unprotected bases, main base, 16 Marines drop out and kill 10 SEVs pretty much off the bat. Tank is also going to be under fire, and it goes down. Marines can't really hold up against it's not enough of them. They don't have upgrades. Cyclone is helping, though, that's for sure. He does hold. A 10 SEVs down and a tank as well. Here, Marine also holding his natural. Both delaying some mining time, but ultimately here, Morin getting the better end of the trade. Fourth CC on the way, immediately into his 2-2 as well, so he's not going to let Clem catch up at all. And, uh, did, wait, did Clem ever get a fourth CC? Wow. No, no, he did not. All right, so here, Marines is about to be finished. Clem falling very far behind in this game. Not so far behind, he can't make a comeback, but oh, it's like it's like getting to that point. All's fair when they get to like around 180 supply. It's the way the engagements can happen, but I'm not quite there yet. Clem has a significant army supply deficit. His upgrades are going to be, once again, 
lower than his opponents in 20 seconds, and they're apparently going to base race. <laughs> they both scan, but the choice of base race. Clem is trying to pull his SEVs back to the high ground. He's got a single tank. He's trying to build a bunker, even just for a little bit of the Sim City. Anti armor missile makes those Marines effectively useless. The tank goes down to the concave. Tanks, though, for here, Marine on the high ground, taking on almost all the Marines of Clem, and Clem is not going to be winning this best of three. Here, Marine experience wins out this series. Starts with the weird ass heli and stuff, but ends with here, Marine. Way far ahead, GG. Here, Marine, 2 1. Qualifiers for TSL. Number five. And Clem will have.